Hey, it's Mario here and in this video we're going to go into how to start weight training. So this is a quick guide for beginners. If you never lifted weights before or if you never took it seriously, this is the thing you need to be focused on. So I'm going to give you five principles that are going to be your bread and butter for the first six months training as a beginner on your fitness journey. So I wish I had a video like this when I first started out six years ago. It would have helped me so much to have five things to focus on. I was spending so much time on trial and error. I was wasting a lot of hours and hours on, on research and making a lot of mistakes and I wish I had something like this. So without further ado, let's crack into the five principles for a beginner when you're starting weight training. And the principle number one is sustainability over anything else. So sustainability, what do I mean by that? Well, look, if you plan to do a six days a week program and if you can't stick to it, and if you feel like a failure, and if you just quit, and try to do the same thing in three months from now, you're not gonna move much forward. I see generations and generations of guys failing like this. They try to do five, six days a week without having any prior experience in training, and they just simply feel like a failure because they couldn't stick to that such a demanding schedule. And it's not just that you're every week that you can't stick to it, but it's something happens and then you don't stick to it and you feel like a failure. Be flexible, be adjustable, find something you can sustainably do. If it's three days a week, that's perfectly fine. You can build an amazing looking body with three days a week of training. Most of my clients trade train three days a week. Most of them that want to look like a celebrity, want to look that, get those abs, want to shred body fat, there's no need to be training more than three days a week unless you have the time for it. And if you really want to spend time in the gym, if you love to train, if you're from a sports background, of course, then sure, adding a little bit more won't hurt. You spread around the volume. Sure, it can help you build a little bit of a habit, right? But it doesn't mean that you have to train five, six days a week. It doesn't mean that you have to do that. If you see someone who's getting great results, they probably started small. You know, most people started small. I started small and we just built up. So make sure to focus on consistency rather than perfection. Consistency will get you very, very far. And if you do, let's say, a perfect week of six days of training, but just once a month, you will not get as nearly as good results as someone who's just going to the gym twice a week, but they're doing it for several months. And that is something that I see happen over and over again. And I see a lot of people failing. So focus on sustainability. Don't violate the sustainability principle is the most important one out of all the five that I'm going to mention here. So it's much more important than optimizing your training plan. So always look at sustainable. Number two principle, really, really important one, is the principle of learning and the principle of investing in skill sets. Lifting weights is a skill set, same as any other skill set. And if you, let's say you wanna drive a race car, you will not be able to do that unless you actually learn how to drive. So learn how to drive, you have to invest in the skill. You have to invest time and practice into learning the skill. And I see guys fail with this because they, they think of this like, oh, I'm supposed to be born <laughs> with the knowledge how to lift weights. Nobody is born. You, you can be a guy, you're, you're a man, you feel like you're strong, you feel like you're a real man. Dude, like you don't know how to lift weights. Nobody knows. You don't get born with the knowledge to lift weights. Some people do learn faster, but it's people who actually invest the time to practice. You, you don't get this knowledge randomly. You don't get this knowledge without actually putting in the work. And by putting in the work and learning what you're doing in the gym, you actually discover that why. Once you discover the why, once you discover the purpose of lifting weights and how to do the lifting, you will actually be able to stick with it for the long run because you feel like, okay, these are the tools, this is what I need to do, and that's going to help you as well figure out and give you that purpose because we're purposeful creatures. We don't do random stuff. You will not be able to do something that you don't know how to do and that you don't know why you're doing for the long run. I mean, that just retarded. Nobody can do that. So people have to learn eventually. And I see guys not even spending a single minute investing in learning how to lift weights. And there's so many technique videos. There's my full workout videos. There's dozens and dozens of videos for every single exercise in the gym that every single compound isolation movement Learn it, read it, watch other people do it, hire a personal trainer, hire a coach, learn, invest in the skill set. That skill set will pay off for the long run. That skill set is going to fuel your performance for decades if you learn this. Same as learning to ride a bicycle. Once you learn how to ride the bicycle, you always know how to learn a bicycle. You're always going to keep improving that knowledge, which is going to get you better and better results. The third principle, kind of building up on this, is the principle of fuck around itis. What is this? What is this? Well, look. You've probably seen a guy walks to the gym, sees a gym bro, and he's like, oh, hey, bro, what are you training today? The guy's like, oh, I'm doing my delts. Okay, I'm going to do delts as well. It's, do you, don't you have a training plan? What are you doing? Like, what are you doing in the gym? You're basically violating the principle of specificity. 
Random workouts lead to random results. And I see this happen over and over again. Guys go to the gym just to go to the gym without any specific plan. If you don't have a specific plan, how the hell do you know what you're aiming at? What's your goal? Like what are you doing in the gym, right? So have a specific goal. If your goal is to build size, look at your plan. If your goal is to get stronger, is that plan getting you stronger? I mean, if you're just doing random stuff, that's not gonna cut it. I mean, if you're just looking to get a sweat, I mean, if you wanna sweat out, you just go run 15 miles. Is that gonna build you size? Well, not, you know, not so much. I mean, if you look at people who do running a, a lot, they don't get that much size unless they're lifting weights as well. So have a specific thing in mind that you wanna do when you step in a gym. Don't do random workouts. Don't be the guy who is forgetting to train his, his legs uh, like for three, four weeks in a row, right? The guy's like, oh, I just forget it. You know, it's fine. <laughs> Have a plan. When you go to the gym, you should know exactly what you need to do and you just simply execute there. You, you approach the scenario with 100% clarity and intent. So when you go to the gym, you know exactly what you need to do, you execute the program. And this is why coaching is so powerful because the coach gives you the exact plan and you just simply have to execute the plan. Here, I give you a free workout that is suitable for beginners. You can just download it, you can just copy it from the description link in the below. Just get it from there execute that plan. That's the only plan you need for the next six months. That's the exact plan you need, nothing else. Everything else is a waste of time. Everything else is fucking around. If you wanna go to the gym and spend three hours doing your abs, do it after this plan because that three hours is gonna be a waste of your time. If you don't invest time in a specific plan like this one, you're basically gonna get random results and most people aren't happy with random results because most people, believe it or not, they have a vision of what they wanna achieve. And that vision is not gonna happen unless you actually do something that is gonna get you there. And with fuck around I mean, I've seen this happen over and over again. I still see this happening with guys who are training five, six years, they just don't have a plan. They just don't know where they're going. And if you don't know where you're going, how, how the hell are you gonna get there? So get the plan, stick with the plan, plan in, exactly when you're gonna do it and execute. This is everything you need to do and comes back to learning. If you keep changing things all the time, your body doesn't even have a chance to learn. If I tell you, hey, learn how to ride a bicycle this week and you're just learning and you fall down a couple of times and you get a, get a grip on it, you know, try to get better, but then next week, oh, let's do rollerblades. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? It's a completely new different skill. Then after we, oh, let's do skateboard. Let's do snowboard afterwards. And every single week you switch, switch it up, you know, you confuse your muscles. And you know, what happens when you confuse your muscles? They don't grow because they don't know how to lift the weights. Before you learn how to overload your muscles with proper weights, your muscle doesn't have a reason to grow. And that builds on the fourth principle, that is the principle of overload. If your body doesn't have a reason to grow, it will not grow. Coming back at fuck around itis, if you keep fucking around the gym, if you don't give your body a reason to grow, if you don't learn how to lift the weight, you will not be able to load the muscle to the appropriate extent that it has to adapt by increasing size. So your size, actually doesn't happen just like that. It happens as a consequence of you reaching a certain limit where your body just simply cannot lift any more weight with the current amount of muscle that it has. So when you go to the gym, you probably have a little bit more muscle than you need. And that's just the baseline strength that you have. And your strength will actually increase very, very fast. So it's called the neuromuscular adaptation phase. Your body is just becoming better at coordinating your muscles, firing those motor units, and the weight goes up quite fast on the bar. You can probably add weight every single time you step in the gym. But size doesn't happen like that. Size actually happens a little bit slower because think about it, if you have enough muscle to do 20 to 25 for a single rep on a squat, and if you're doing reps with 135, does your body have the need to build more muscle? Of course not. So until you actually reach a point where your body needs to build more muscle, it won't do it. It's an energy taxing process. The body is very, very economical. It's a very economical system in a sense that it won't spend extra energy on holding muscle if they don't need that. You don't see guys walking around with a, like 200 pounds and, and super, super muscular doing pink dumbbells. You know, that's just no need for that, that person, that body, that system to hold on to that muscle mass because there's no uh, demand. The homeostasis that you're currently in has to be disrupted. In order for your body to adapt, it has to come from a very, very strong stimulant. And if you're going to the gym, if there's no overload, if there's not, not more and more pressure put on, there's not more and more resistance, there's no progress. That's exactly how evolution happened as well. If, if we didn't have any resistance and any pressure, any demand, we wouldn't evolve, right? Everything in your body is designed to adapt. Give it a reason to adapt. If you're squatting 135 this week, next week, do 140 for the same amount of reps. Week after, do 145 for the same amount of reps. Do 150 for the same amount of reps. If you get stuck, 
try to do a little bit more rest with, with the weight that you did previous week and then you go back and try to increase the weight. Constantly try to bite off a little bit more weight. Constantly try to add weights. Fractional plates help with this because you can add just half a pound a week, you don't even feel it, and then you kind of break through. Go back one step if you need to, if you're super, super beat up, if you're super, super sore, back off for a little bit, then come back and add more weight. Add more weight, that's the principle. There's only one right way to train and that is training for progressive overload. Without this component, everything else fall, falls apart. You can go in and do a ton of supersets, you do some kind of cable fly, whatever, spinning, hell, exercise, you know, for 50 to 100 reps. It won't help unless the weight is going up on the main lifts, on the compound lifts that are actually disrupting your homeostasis. I mean, you can disrupt your homeostasis with leg extensions, you can a little bit, but if you want big legs, you have to do a little bit of squatting as well or leg pressing. You know, it's some kind of resistance inducing exercise. If you're injured, of course, you want to adjust a little bit and you do leg extensions because it's better than nothing. But if you can do all the lifts, do the compound lifts and focus on progressive overload. So that's the principle number four. Super, super important. You're going to be wasting your time if you're lifting the same amount of weight. I see guys lifting for two years. Keep the same weight, they look the same. No difference. Basically wasting their time, spinning their wheels, as, as they say. The fifth, the final principle, something I want to leave you with, and that's the good old rule, you cannot out-train a bad diet. So you will not be able to out-train a poor diet. What does this mean? Well, I'm not saying that you have to count every single calorie. I'm not saying that you have to be an expert nutritionist. I'm not saying that you have to read 15 books on nutrition. But there are three things that you need to do. Number one, Figure out approximately how many calories you need, whether it's lose weight or stay the same weight or gain weight. Figure that out, come on dude, like it's 2016 as the time of making this video and every single year from now, 2017, 18, 20, 21, everything is gonna be a lot easier to figure this out. There's so many videos, I made a ton of videos as well, I'm gonna leave a couple in the description below to figure this out. I mean, don't be, don't be a dick to yourself, right? So figure this out. Calculate the amount of calories you need. Use MyFitnessPal, figure that out for at least a period of time. Then if you want to track it, keep tracking. If you don't want to track it, at least you have a plan to stick with. Figure out your calories. I mean, that, that's the bottom line, at least for the first thing. The second thing, figure out your protein intake. I mean, come on, uh, figure out what's your ideal weight. Eat that amount of protein in grams per pound of ideal weight. Just eat that amount and you're going to be fine. And do that every single day. You don't have to be perfect. You can be 10, 20% on and off between the days but have a goal and stick with that goal. People with a poor diet, I mean, just doing random stuff, they, they can be training really, really hard, but if you hit up McDonald's and if you drink 2,000 calorie shakes after the workout, you're not gonna move forward. And that is often the case. I mean, guys think that they can train just simply through force, and then you see guys who are just doing 60, 70% of the effort in the gym, but put exactly the same amount of effort in nutrition, about 60, 70%, they still get much, much better results because it just complements each other. It goes hand in hand, right? This is the fuel, this is the stimulus. This is the permission to grow, and this is the stimulus to grow. It goes hand in hand together. And when it comes to the third final point, when it comes to nutrition, dude, like, stop eating junk. I mean, come on. Minimize the amount of processed food that you're eating. You're, you need your body to be optimized, optimized and, and fueled for the performance that you want to do. Put in the fruits, put in the veggies, minimize the amount of processed junk you're eating, like hydrogenated oils, processed carbs, refined grains. I mean, you can minimize this. It's a no-brainer. It, it's just simply coming down to a conscious choice to choose to do this instead of just like a leaf in the wind, let yourself go and eat whatever your friends eat. And if your friends aren't jacked, then that's the, one of the main reasons because they don't take care of themselves. They, they think that someone else is gonna take care of themselves. Take responsibility for your nutrition, same as if you're gonna go train, because you're training, it's, half of it is just gonna go away. It's gonna be a waste of time if you're not putting the time in the nutrition. So do yourself a favor and handle this as well as get an appropriate amount of sleep. I mean, this is just a no brainer. I keep repeating these basics because people aren't doing them. And that's one of the reasons why, like people forget to drink enough water and they're asking what is the best pre-workout supplement. Dude, if you're not drinking enough water, no supplement in the world has nearly as much effectiveness on, on just your personal results as drinking a sufficient amount of water or getting enough sleep. Those are the basics. And if you don't handle those, Everything else is just a waste of time. So focus on these five principles that I gave you in this video. This is your bread and butter, as I said, for the first six months. Everything else is a waste of time. And I'm not saying learning is a waste of time. Keep learning, educating yourself, watching videos, improving your knowledge. But this is your action plan. This is what has to be done. These five things. Everything else, 
more or less, you will be able to learn and progress and optimize the plan. But again, remember the principle number one, sustainability. So if you do figure out that you could get a little bit better results if you train on a different time of the day, but if that time of the day is not sustainable for you, don't do the trade-off where you lose consistency for getting that little bit optimal result. So think about what is sustainable, implement these five things and you will get the results that you want for the first six months, you will get great results. Then you can see if you wanna take it further or if you wanna just keep doing it and keep progressing, that is completely your choice. And that is what this video is about, is giving you the choice and giving you the knowledge. Now it's all up to you. Now it's your call whether you wanna do it or not. So that is all I can do. I can show you the door, but you actually have to open it and walk through that door. Okay, so that is the video. So hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below how you enjoy these principles. Aside from that, it's gonna be linked in the description below, all the stuff that I mentioned, key points as well as usual, all written up in the description. Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below to support the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.